Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. It's Sergeant Mitchell again, and thank you for tuning in for The More You Know with Sergeant Mitchell. Uh, today we have Lieutenant Beard, a recent graduate of the Nurse Transition Program. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm good, how are you? Ma'am, I am doing amazing. It's another beautiful Monday in the world's greatest Air Force. Um, so Lieutenant Beard has taken time out of her day to just, you know, discuss the nurse transition program with us. So if you don't mind, ma'am, just give us a quick little backstory about yourself. About myself, okay. Um, well, again, I'm Lieutenant Beard. Um, I'm from Southern Virginia. I am the oldest of eight kids. Um, I'm the first one that's ever been to college, uh, decides to go into nursing. And uh, before I joined the Air Force, I worked as a civilian neuro ICU nurse at Duke in North Carolina. Um, I worked on the ICU for about nine months and then decided to join the Air Force. And here I am. <laughs> before we get started, so are you a Duke fan or a North Carolina fan? I'm a West Virginia fan, actually. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome, awesome. You guys almost pulled the upset this past weekend. I was watching that game. I'm so upset. <laughs> I, I in Oklahoma with a passion. I was stationed at Tinker Air Force Base, and I cannot stand Oklahoma. Me either. Um, <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. So, I know you just said you were a civilian nurse before you joined the Air Force. So, I guess, what made you change your mind that, hey, maybe the civilian route is not for me. Let me start applying for this nurse transition program. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I, I love the civilian world and at times I do miss it because um, you you have the ability to move to different uh, fields of nursing a little quicker okay. than in the Air Force. Um, however, that could be detrimental to new grad nurses. So there's a hit or miss there. Um, but I decided to join the Air Force because I, I knew I wanted to serve my country okay. and I thought that the military was what I wanted. I just knew I wanted to do nursing first to get my feet wet. Um, and I thought that joining the Air Force and serving my country at a greater capacity is how I could be the best nurse that I could be. So okay. that's why I decided. Okay, so when that Air Force recruiter came to your, your campus or wherever he met you at, what did he tell you about the nurse transition program to, I guess, kind of spark your interest? I actually reached out to him. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, my recruiter, um, Phil Musgrave in North Carolina. He's wonderful. Shout out. She just gave you a shout out. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, he he kind of just explained, he's like, you know, you are an ICU nurse, however, with, because I was only, so the NTP program is for new grad nurses, yes. which means less than one year of experience. So yes. even though I worked at ICU for nine months, I didn't hit that one year mark. Um, and so basically this program, he told me that it, uh, the Air Force kind of takes you as a baby nurse and forms you into a military nurse because it's a lot different than the civilian world. And so although I did have experience, they were going to teach me how to the military way of nursing. Um, so really, it's just a safe space like the nurse transition program to make mistakes as a new grad nurse okay. you know, before you get into that your MTF where, you know, mistakes should it be made, you know, because you're you're dealing with active duty, you're dealing with dependents, you're dealing with, you know, retired people that you don't want to make mistakes on. Um, not saying that you should in the interview, program, <laughs> but, it. no. but it's, it's your orientation and it gives you extra time to ask questions because a lot of these people who are in the NTP program are coming straight out of college. I'm one of the yeah. fortunate yeah. ones who had experience before, but that's not the case for everybody. A lot of them are straight out of college and have no hands-on experience. Okay. So I'm glad that you brought up again, ma'am, that you had experience before you apply for the nurse transition program. Uh, I want to ask you this question. Um, I heard in the past from fully qualified nurses, one of the benefits of being in the Air Force is uh, nurses, who are nurses who are currently in the Air Force don't withhold their knowledge. In the civilian world, there's that fear of if I train you up to be just as knowledgeable as me, you're going to take my position. So I'm not going to teach you all the tricks of the trade. Is that kind of something you have seen? I fortunately have never seen that. My unit at Duke was wonderful. Um, it was it's a teaching hospital okay. so I think that also has a big a big thing to do with it if you don't start out at a teaching hospital sometimes nurses eat their young is a real thing um however at it's such a big hospital like Duke a lot of nurses um are wanting to do better and wanting to leave and you know broaden their knowledge so they don't hold back however at smaller hospitals like where I'm from in southern Virginia um I have heard you know nurses eat their young and they're not willing to teach you because you will take their position as charge nurse. You will 
there are DAISY awards um, in the civilian world. And so that's basically, you know, patients kind of uh, nominating you because you're one of the best nurses. And so a lot of older nurses don't want you to have that recognition, especially if they have some vendetta against you. Um, in the Air Force, I, again, they teach, they do not hold anything back. Um, the retention obviously is different in the Air Force because you move every two to four years. Um, and then, you know, people join ICU fellowship or the ED fellowship. Um, so there's not a lot of room to withhold knowledge because you're going to leave. And if you don't right. teach that person everything that you can, you're, that's a detriment to your unit. And a lot of us love our units, we love our patients. And that's something we don't want to do. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you said that because I always tell people we're trying to train you up because eventually Sergeant Mitchell, Lieutenant Barry, we're going to retire. We're going to separate. So we have to make sure the Air Force is going to be in capable hands. So there's no information being withheld. Um, I know you said you reached out to your recruiter. When did you actually start the application process? Oh, yeah. So I, um, I started working at Duke in February of 2020, and I actually reached out to him in March of 2020. So pretty early on, um, uh, I because I knew not that like my orientation at Duke was bad. I loved it. I knew I wanted to do it, um, but I knew that the process with COVID, because COVID was slowing everything down, that I needed to get it started earlier rather than later. Um, so I think me and Sergeant Musgrave probably started April, I believe. We started paperwork in April, and then I commissioned in October and went to OTS. It actually is a good time to start this early spring because normally the selection board is going to be sometime in maybe July or August. So you should start at the beginning of the year or sometime in the spring. So, uh, so, so we talked about when you start the application. So how did the process go once you did start? You know your interviews. Uh, was a recommendation? How did everything go to make yourself stand out? Because normally we have maybe 10 to 15 spots for the entire nation, and you were fortunate enough to get selected. How did you make yourself stand out? Um, I think a lot of it, um, according to Sergeant Musgrave, was my essay that you have to okay. write. I um, mean, they give you questions um, for the NTP program, and so you just answer them honestly. Um, I think for me, what makes me stand out is I mean, I, I have seven siblings, so I'm the oldest one. Okay. Um, my biggest thing is I want better for my family. And so the best way I can do that is to be the best that I can be and what better way than to serve my country um, and also do what I love, is, which is being a nurse. Um, I actually didn't want to be a nurse in high school. I wanted to be a cop. Um, That's a huge yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so for me, I, I lost two people pretty close to me um, the summer that I graduated high school. Um, I within three months, I lost two people, and it was it was very traumatic experience, and to dig myself out of that hole was really hard, and I knew that the way that I could kind of honor their, their lives was nursing, and I think that kind of made me stand out a little bit was okay. just the transparency so be honest you know tell them what you need even yeah. if it's dark like mine but like why do you want to be a nurse and why the air force nursing because it's not for everybody um and so i think transparency honesty and grit really is what made That's me stand out uh and i'm glad you said that ma'am uh because you said something very tragic happened to you but you were uh, able to convey to the selection board how that drove your passion to be a nurse. And I think, like you said, that's probably why you got selected. Um, the Air Force is not looking for, I just wanna serve my country. I wanna make my parents proud. That is amazing. But if we only have 15 slots and 80 people are applying, how are you gonna make yourself stand out? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so now that you've been selected, um, you are going off to officer training school in October. So how was that process for you? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I had absolutely, being non-prior and nobody in my family being in the military, it was like, what am I doing? I have no idea. Um, so they send you this big email um, with a roster of 360 people and yeah. they kind of give you um, like a link to the OTS board and you have a lot of these CBTs to do prior to going to OTS. And it kind of just teaches you Air Force history, um, drills, you know, like how to stay in at attention because a lot of, not a lot of us, but some of us are non-prior and they know that, um, and they don't really have time to teach you how to stay in at attention there. So they do this prior. Um, 
so that was a little nerve wracking. Cause I was like, man, I don't know how to, how to do these feet movements. I don't really know. I don't know what staying at attention means. Um, like when do I do this? And so, um, that was, that was a little intimidating and also training for the PT test because as a nurse, I will say, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, it, there's no gyms open. And, you know, I was working six days a week to pick up because nurses were getting COVID nurses were quitting. Things were not good. So I was not physically in shape. And so, um, that was one of my biggest fears, but actually getting to OTS, um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I get stuck in uh, positions. So I was chosen to be flight leader, which just cause I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so basically I had no idea what that meant. I thought that that would just be me taking accountability and taking temperatures because yeah. COVID. I didn't know that that meant that I was going to um, be drilling. I was going to be leading my flight. <laughs> so that was a little intimidating. Um, but I had a prior enlisted roommate who really took care of me. So as flight leader, Master Sergeant King, you know, he was coming to me every, every 10 minutes to tell me something to do on the first day. So I didn't have time to kind of, you know, unpack. I didn't have time to, to fold my, my shirts, to roll my socks, to make my, my bed, anything like that. Um, and so fortunately, because she was enlist, prior enlisted, she helped me a lot. Okay. So having, having somebody there, um, just being honest, like you don't need to know what you're doing. You just need to have people there who are willing to teach you. Um, and so that was, I leaned a lot on my flight because a lot of them were prior enlisted. They'd been through boot camp. Um, and as long as you, as long as you have integrity and, you know, you're not, you know, acting like, you know, everything, yes. somebody's willing to help you. And I fortunately had that in my flight. So it was a learning process. You're very, very, very busy. You have online schoolwork. You have, you know, you got to make sure your dorm is up to inspection because you never know when they're going to walk in. Um, and then you also got to meet people. I, you know, as flight leader, I had to meet my flight instructor and it was via phone. And so you never know when they're going to call. Just it, it was a process, but it was doable. And as long as you stick to your grit, you can get through it. It's not that bad. <laughs> awesome. So the one question that we do get all the time, ma'am, is while I'm in officer training school, uh, will I have contact to my family and friends? Can you please speak on that? Uh, yeah, so we did, fortunately. I don't know if it was because with COVID, we had to quarantine the first two weeks. So maybe that's why. Um, however, I have heard that, yes, you get your phone. And although you get to keep your phone, you shouldn't be on it. They, they tell you, do not be on social media. Like, only call your family, like, after, um, you know, after hours so that's after dinner time 1700 okay. once you're back in your dorm you know you have your phone you can call your family um but during you know from 0400 to 1700 they would prefer you not be on your phone um so yes you can call your family <laughs> i'm glad you said that because that people always think they're going off the prison i'm like no you can still call you can still facetime zoom microsoft teams whatever we're not snatching you away uh from your family yeah uh, okay. Now that you have graduated uh, officer training school, now you are going off to the actual program. So can you please speak about that? So what does the program out, you know, entail? Uh, yeah, so I went to Tampa, Florida to McDill Air Force Base. Um, so that there's no hospital on that base. So we do our clinicals at Tampa General Hospital, civilian hospital. Um, so your first, uh, I want to say week, your first week to two weeks, you're going to be in the classroom. So you're going to go in OCPs, you know, Monday through Friday, um, and you're going to kind of go through PowerPoints. Like, well, how did Air Force, how did the Air Force begin? You're going to learn Air Force history again. Okay. Um, then you're, they're going to go into nursing history with Florence Nightingale. They kind of just go every, over everything. And then they kind of tie that into Air Force nursing. So they give you a brief, like, okay, this is your history as an Air Force nurse. You should know it. You should love it. Um, and then they go into rules and things like that. Um, and then they kind of go into the clinical setting. So you have a skills day prior to starting clinical. Okay. And that's probably at the end of the first week or the beginning of the second week. And so that's where, because, again, a lot of these people, um, students are, I think, in my class of 15, uh, there were three or four of us that had prior nursing experience. So the rest of them just came out of 
ROTC or nursing school. Um, so they, they show you how to put fully catheters in, NG tubes in, place IVs, important things that you need to know because you're going to be doing it on your unit. Um, and so they check you off. You go through each station and um, you have a partner and then there will be an instructor there to check you off. Okay. So once you've completed that, this after the second week, you go into clinicals. So they issue your scrubs to you and they kind of tell you what you should wear, what you should look like. And they explain to you that um, they will be popping in once a day onto your clinical unit to check in with you. And when they do like a uh, major shocky was one of my instructors, when she would come visit me on my unit, um, you have to give an S bar report on one of your patients. So you need to, they kind of teach you that prior to going into clinical as well. What is S bar? How do you give it? What do I expect from you? Um, and so once you learn all that, you go into clinical, you go to your unit. Um, so you have a home unit and um, that is your, your med surge unit. Cause a lot of us are med surge. Yeah. Uh, you have your home unit, which is where you do most of your clinicals. However, we have, they're called impact days. Impact days are, um, we get one day in the emergency department in the trauma bay. We get one day with the, um, the code team. So if there's a code blue anywhere in the hospital, you run with that team to that code. Uh, you get to go to an ICU. Um, they do ask you preferences, like, okay, which ICU would you prefer? Um, and then they'll stick you where they can on which day. And then I think there might be one more impact day, but I'm not, I can't remember. So you have four to five impact days and then the rest of your clinical days are your home unit. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. Okay. So how long is that first, uh, I guess, you know, that program, how long is that? How many weeks? Uh, I want to, oh my gosh, 10, I believe. <laughs> 10? Okay, let's go with 10. 10 yeah. weeks feels good to me. So uh, once you complete that, ma'am, you're going off to, I guess, your your actual assignment, right? Your first base? Yes, sir. Okay, so once you're at your first base, they take the, you know, they let you go. Are you still being shadowed? Somebody's following you? What's happening? Yeah, so um, once you graduate the NTP program, you have the, the 10 days or whatever your orders say to get to your NTF. Um, so once you get there, you're still in orientation. Um, NTP is really just, um, it is still orientation, but you know, it's for me, you know, it's a civilian hospital, so it's not really the same. Um, and a lot of even NTFs are different. So, you know, SAMC uses a different system than Wright Patterson. So okay. they understand that like, even though you did NTP, you still need orientation to your specific unit. Mm -hmm. So yes, I got to my unit and um, I did orientation for six weeks. Um, and sometimes you have two preceptors, sometimes you have four, just depends on, you know, if somebody's getting deployed, things like that. Um, so yeah, about six weeks, you can, if you need more time, your NTF is usually pretty lenient with that because they know that you're a new grad. So if you need more time, they'll give you eight weeks. Um, but yeah, so you did that for about six weeks and you kind of just learn your unit, learn your charting system and your patient population as well. So how are you liking your actually first base so far? How's everything going for you? You know, I I wish I would have chosen Eglin as my first base, um, but I was fortunate. So in the um, in the process with Sergeant Musgrave, you know, getting selected, they do give you options. They say, okay, put your top five choices of bases, and they give you a list. Um, and they do that for NTP as well as NTFs. So NTP, I I wanted Tampa. So fortunately I fell into the, even though like if I would have selected, I wanted Texas, I didn't fall into that time frame because Texas okay. like that they were behind us. So like Tampa was the one I needed to go to. Um, I did choose Wright Patterson as my first base um, because I, I wanted to be closer to my family yeah. for the, my first assignment, just in case, cause I know like my career is going to take off. And I knew that I would, because I'm not a fully qualified air force nurse for the first year, I wasn't deployable. So I figured, why not be closer to my family and all of my siblings for my first year to two years before, you know, my career really takes off and, you know, I go overseas or things like that. So I'm very fortunate. I cold, it's cold up here already in Ohio. <laughs> That's so, why I want um, to stay down south. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to go back, back down south. Um, it's like 50 to 60 degrees here already. So it's a little yeah. It's a little cold, but um, we have a pretty big base. Uh, we have a really big MTF, 
it's not the biggest one, um, but we do see a lot of patients here. Um, I think it's a good place to learn. Honestly, I like it a lot. And my leadership is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm very blessed and very fortunate to get a really good first assignment. Awesome. So I'm glad everything is going positive so far. Hopefully it stays the same way during your three-year obligation with the Air Force as a nurse. Um, I did want to step back, ma'am, ask you about your family, because you said you're the oldest of eight siblings. So were, was your family supportive of you joining the Air Force? Were they hesitant? You mind speaking about oh, that? Yeah, um, my, you know, my siblings, because they're so young. The youngest one is, uh, she's almost two. Wow. So she doesn't really comprehend. She just knows that Savannah's not home anymore. Yeah. Um, so, but yes, my dad, my dad's very, very supportive. My stepmom is very, very supportive. Um, you know, they were a little hesitant, you know, being, it's a military, you know, it's new, yes. I'm going to be far away, things like that. And with the, with nobody in my family really being military, they don't quite understand, you know, they think, oh, she's just going to get shipped off to Afghanistan. It's That's like, the first thing, full metal jacket pops in everybody's head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, same thing, my, my mother does the same thing. She gets so worried, but, um, after, you know, kind of explaining the process and them kind of understanding, like, I am a nurse first and foremost. Yes. So my duty is to, you know, my patients. So yes, will I get deployed? Absolutely. It's part of your duty in the Air Force. Um, but, you know, I will be stateside a lot. And so I think explaining to them, they can't, became more supportive because they knew that it was something I really, really wanted. And they could see that. <laughs> So I'm glad your family is supportive, ma'am, because sometimes, you know, we hear mom and dad's like, don't do it. They're going to ship you off to Afghanistan. You're going to be jumping out of planes, kicking in doors. Oh, no, you're you're joining the Air Force as a medical professional. That is going to be your full time job. We're not going to train you to be a nurse and say, hey, go start working on this aircraft. Go start kicking in doors. No, you're going to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm glad that you actually validate that. Hey, Sergeant Mitchell is not lying to you. Sergeant Musgrove is not lying to you. Um, mm -hmm. So, ma'am, what would you say to somebody who's currently on the fence, who's, you know, currently in school to be a nurse or who's fully qualified? What would you say to somebody to make them more comfortable about contacting the recruiter to see if this is the best option for them? I think uh, just knowing yourself, I think you need to deep dive and kind of understand what is your goal. Um, so, I'll, again, do you want to serve your country? Yeah, but does that mean that it's the best fit for you? Um, I think that you know, Air Force teaches you a lot. And, you know, we have preceptors who are wonderful. They want to pass their knowledge on. They want to grow. Um, the military does push you to be better. They want you to, they want you to get your master's. They want you to get your, your doctorate if that's what you want. They want you to take on leadership positions. They want you to be the best version of yourself as you possibly can, because that is what's going to be beneficial to the mission. Um, so I think that knowing yourself, knowing your capabilities is top priority because if if you if you don't feel comfortable being in leadership positions in nursing school or anything else like that you need to be prepared that that's what you're going to be doing in the air force mm -hmm. you know so once once i put on first lieutenant next year and i'm a fully qualified nurse i'm going to be a supervisor of a second lieutenant mm -hmm. so you're going to you have additional duties you have other things to do other than just nursing and if you can't take on leadership positions you kind of got to either get over that or understand that it's, the military is probably not the best fit for you. Um, but if you're on the fence about it, I say, why not try? Give it your best shot. Go ahead and apply to the program. And if, you know, give yourself a chance. Like, I think it will help you grow. And if you are willing to grow and to be the best version, to be the best nurse, this is a great opportunity. Um, I will say, if you want to get to, flight nursing or you want to get to ICU really quickly, you know, it, it's not as quickly as it would be in the civilian world. Uh, you know, like if you start med search here through the NTP program, you have to be two years on station before you can go to the ICU or the emergency department fellowship. So understand that there are timelines here. You can't just, you know, oh, I did med search for five months. I'm done with it. That's yeah. not how it works. So um, ask questions, you know, and if a recruiter doesn't know everything, they're going to find the answer for you. They will ask. Yes. Yeah, they'll ask and they'll look up, you know, this YouTube video. They'll do things like that for you, but you've got to be willing to ask. So um, just knowing yourself, knowing what you want, your goals. Does the Air Force fit that? If not, don't do it. If yes, possibility. 
I say go for it. It's a wonderful position. Like, I think it's wonderful. I love serving my country. I love the people I've met. And the Air Force is going to push you to be better. And that's just, that's what you want. And so. Last question. Mm -hmm. Why the Air Force? Why not the Navy? Why not the Army? Why us? Uh, so I don't really have like an inspirational uh, reason. <laughs> But um, I will say, so although nobody was military in my family, my grandfather who passed away, um, he was drafted into the army. And he, so he did his four years in Germany and got out. Um, he, I always told him, you know, in high school, I said, I know I want to do military. I'm going to do army. I, I just know it. He said, no, if you're going to do any branch, do air force, they take care of you. You know, that the better bases, the better food. He's like, I always would go because he like Air Force was near him in Germany. So he would go and try to sneak in and eat Air Force food. So it, it, there's really no inspirational behind it, but um, it's my grandfather, you know, he kind of just pushed me there. And uh, flight nursing is, I want to do ICU flight nursing, which is seat okay. cat. So I know that that's Air Force. So um, that's why I chose it. Well, Mel, thank you for being completely honest. So now you know what Sergeant Mitchell says, it's the best branch. I am not lying. She is living the good quality of life. Yeah. Ma'am, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to inform me and future people applying for the nurse transition program. I wish you well for your three years or 20 years, whatever you decide to do with the Air Force. I hope the Air Force continues to treat you very well. Uh, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and I will get more content out to you as quickly as possible. Other than that, ma'am, enjoy the rest of your Monday. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day.